The decline of Buddhism in the Indian subcontinent refers to a gradual process of dwindling and replacement of Buddhism in India, which ended around the 12th century. According to Lars Fogelin, this was, "...not a singular event, with a singular cause, it was a centuries-long process." The decline of Buddhism has been attributed to various factors, especially the regionalization of India after the end of the Gupta Empire 320–650 CE, which led to the loss of patronage and donations as Indian dynasties turned to the services of Hindu Brahmins. Another factor were invasions of North India by various groups such as Huns, Turco-Mongols and Persians and subsequent destruction of Buddhist institutions such as Nalanda and religious persecutions. Religious competition with Hinduism and later Islam were also important factors. The total Buddhist population in 2010 in the Indian subcontinent, excluding that of Sri Lanka, Nepal and Bhutan, was about 10 million, of which about 7.2% lived in Bangladesh, 92.5% in India and 0.2% in Pakistan. <laughs> Growth of Buddhism. Buddhism expanded in the Indian subcontinent in the centuries after the death of the Buddha, particularly after receiving the endorsement and royal support of the Maurya Empire under Ashoka in the 3rd century BCE. It spread even beyond the Indian subcontinent to Central Asia and China. The Buddha's period saw not only urbanization, but also the beginnings of centralized states. The successful expansion of Buddhism depended on the growing economy of the time, together with increased centralized political organization capable of change. Buddhism spread across ancient India and state support by various regional regimes continued through the first millennium BCE. The consolidation of monastic organization made Buddhism the center of religious and intellectual life in India. Pushyamitra, the first ruler of the Shunga dynasty, built great Buddhist topes at Sanchi in 188 BCE. The succeeding Kanva dynasty had four Buddhist Kanva kings. Topic: <inaudible> Gupta dynasty, 4th 6th century. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Religious developments. During the Gupta dynasty 4th to 6th century, Mahayana Buddhism turned more ritualistic, while Buddhist ideas were adopted into Hindu schools. The differences between Buddhism and Hinduism blurred, and Vaishnavism, Shaivism and other Hindu traditions became increasingly popular, while Brahmins developed a new relationship with the state. As the system grew, Buddhist monasteries gradually lost control of land revenue. In parallel, the Gupta kings built Buddhist temples such as the one at Kushinagara, and monastic universities such as those at Nalanda, as evidenced by records left by three Chinese visitors to India. <laughs> Hun invasions 6th century. Chinese scholars traveling through the region between the 5th and 8th centuries, such as Faxian, Xuanzang, Yijing, Wei Sheng, and Sung Yun, began to speak of a decline of the Buddhist Sangha in the northwestern parts of Indian subcontinent, especially in the wake of the Hun invasion from Central Asia in the 6th century CE. Xuanzang wrote that numerous monasteries in northwestern India had been reduced to ruins by the Huns. The Hun ruler Mahirakula, who ruled from 515 CE in northwestern region, modern Afghanistan, Pakistan, Pakistan and North India, suppressed Buddhism as well. He did this by destroying monasteries as far away as modern-day Allahabad. Yashodharman and Gupta Empire rulers, in and after about 532 CE, reversed Mahirakula's campaign and ended the Mahirakula era. According to Peter Harvey, the religion recovered slowly from these invasions during the 7th century, with the Buddhism of southern Pakistan remaining strong. The reign of the Pala dynasty 8th to 12th century saw Buddhism in North India recover due to royal support from the Palas who supported various Buddhist centers like Nalanda. By the 11th century, Pala rule had weakened however. <laughs> Socio-political change and religious competition The regionalization of India after the end of the Gupta Empire 320 to 650 CE led to the loss of patronage and donations. The prevailing view of decline of Buddhism in India is summed by A.L. 
Basham's classic study which argues that the main cause was the rise of a reformed religion, Hinduism, which focused on the worship of deities like Shiva and Vishnu and became more popular among the common people while Buddhism, being focused on monastery life, had become disconnected from public life and its life rituals, which were all left to Hindu Brahmins. Topic. Religious competition The growth of new forms of Hinduism and to a lesser extent Jainism was a key element in the decline in Buddhism in India, particularly in terms of diminishing financial support to Buddhist monasteries from laity and royalty. According to Hazra, Buddhism declined in part because of the rise of the Brahmins and their influence in socio-political process. The disintegration of central power also led to regionalization of religiosity and religious rivalry. Rural and devotional movements arose within Hinduism, along with Shaivism, Vaishnavism, Bhakti and Tantra, that competed with each other, as well as with numerous sects of Buddhism and Jainism. This fragmentation of power into feudal kingdoms was detrimental for Buddhism, as royal support shifted towards other communities and Brahmins developed a strong relationship with Indian states. Over time, the new Indian dynasties, which arose after the 7th and 8th centuries, tended to support the Brahmanical ideology and Hinduism, and this conversion proved decisive. These new dynasties, all of which supported Brahmanical Hinduism, include the Karkotas and Pratiharas of the north, the Rashtrakutas of the Deccan, and the Pandyas and Pallavas of the south." The Pala dynasty is one sole exception to these. One of the reasons of this conversion was that the Brahmins were willing and able to aid in local administration, and they provided counselors, administrators and clerical staff. Moreover, Brahmins had clear ideas about society, law and statecraft and studied texts such as the Arthashastra and the Manumriti and could be more pragmatic than the Buddhists, whose religion was based on monastic renunciation and did not recognize that there was a special warrior class that was divinely ordained to use violence. As Johannes Bronckhorst notes, Buddhists could give very little practical advice in response to that of the Brahmins and Buddhist texts often speak ill of kings and royalty. Amvet states that while Buddhist institutions tended to be less involved in politics, Hindu Brahmins provided numerous services for Indian royalty, at the higher level they provided legitimacy by creating genealogies and origin mythologies identifying the kings as Kshatriyas and organizing impressive ceremonial functions that invested the king with all the paraphernalia and mystique of Hindu royalty, at the lower level they propagandized the mystique of social supremacy and political power. They taught the population, they established ritual and priestly relations with the prominent households of the region, they promulgated caste and the rights of kings. Bronckhorst notes that some of the influence of the Brahmins also derived from the fact that they were seen as powerful, because of their use of incantations and spells mantras, as well as other sciences like astronomy, astrology, calendrics and divination. Many Buddhists refused to use such sciences and left them to Brahmins, who also performed most of the rituals of the Indian states as well as in places like Cambodia and Burma. This eventually led to further challenges for Buddhists. Rulers gave financial support to Brahmins, took the responsibility of enforcing Varna laws and discriminating against heretical sects, and refused state protection to their persons and property. If they did not actively murder and loot them themselves, Lars Fogelin argues that the concentration of the Sangha into large monastic complexes like Nalanda was one of the contributing causes for the decline. He states that the Buddhists of these large monastic institutions became largely divorced from day-to-day -day interaction with the laity, except as landlords over increasingly large monastic properties. Padman of Jaini also notes that Buddhist laypersons are relatively neglected in the Buddhist literature, which produced only one text on lay life and not until the 11th century, while Jains produced around 50 texts on the life and conduct of a Jaina layperson. These factors all slowly led to the replacement of Buddhism in the south and west of India by Hinduism and Jainism. Fogelin states that while some small Buddhist centers still persisted in South and West India in the 11th and 12th centuries, for the most part, both monastic and lay Buddhism had been eclipsed and replaced by Hinduism and Jainism by the end of the first millennium CE. Buddhist sources also mention violence against Buddhists by Hindu Brahmins and kings. Hazra mentions that the 8th and 9th centuries saw Brahminical hostilities towards Buddhism in South India. Xuanzang, for example, mentions the destruction of Buddhist images by the Shaivite king Shashanka and Taranatha also mentions the destruction of temples by Brahmins.
Topic: <laughs> Religious convergence and absorption. Buddhism's distinctiveness also diminished with the rise of Hindu sects. Though Mahayana writers were quite critical of Hinduism, the devotional cults of Mahayana Buddhism and Hinduism likely seemed quite similar to laity, and the developing tantrism of both religions were also similar. Also, the increasingly esoteric nature of both Hindu and Buddhist tantrism made it incomprehensible to India's masses, for whom Hindu devotionalism and the worldly power-oriented Nath Siddhas became a far better alternative. Buddhist ideas, and even the Buddha himself, were absorbed and adapted into orthodox Hindu thought, while the differences between the two systems of thought were emphasized. Elements which medieval Hinduism adopted during this time included vegetarianism, a critique of animal sacrifices, a strong tradition of monasticism founded by figures such as Shankara, and the adoption of the Buddha as an avatar of Vishnu. On the other end of the spectrum, Buddhism slowly became more and more Brahmanized initially beginning with the adoption of Sanskrit as a means to defend their interests in royal courts. According to Bronckhorst, this move to the Sanskrit cultural world also brought with it numerous Brahmanical norms which now were adopted by the Sanskrit Buddhist culture one example is the idea present in some Buddhist texts that the Buddha was a Brahmin who knew the Vedas. Bronckhorst notes that with time, even the caste system became widely accepted, by all practical purposes. By Indian Buddhists this survives among the Nuar Buddhists of Nepal. Bronkhorst notes that eventually a tendency developed to see Buddhism's past as having been dependent on Brahmanism and secondary to it. This idea, according to Bronkhorst, may have acted like a Trojan horse, weakening this religion from within. The political realities of the period also led some Buddhists to change their doctrines and practices. For example, some later texts such as the Mahaparinirvana Sutra and the Sarvatargesha Parasodhana Tantra begin to speak of the importance of protecting Buddhist teachings and that killing is allowed if necessary for this reason. Later Buddhist literature also begins to see kings as bodhisattvas and their actions as being in line with the Dharma Buddhist kings like Devapala and Jayavarman VII also claimed this. Bronckhorst also thinks that the increase in the use of apotropaic rituals including for the protection of state and king and spells mantras by 7th century Indian Buddhism is also a response to Brahmanical and Shaiva influence. These included fire sacrifices, which were performed under the rule of Buddhist king Dharmapala R. C. 775-812. Alexis Sanderson has shown that Tantric Buddhism is filled with imperial imagery reflecting the realities of medieval India, and that in some ways worked to sanctify that world. Perhaps because of these changes, Buddhism remained indebted to Brahmanical thought and practice now that it had adopted much of its worldview. Bronckhorst argues that these somewhat drastic changes took them far from the ideas and practices they had adhered to during the early centuries of their religion, and dangerously close to their much detested rivals. These changes which brought Buddhism closer to Hinduism, eventually made it much easier for Buddhism to be absorbed into Hinduism. Patronage In ancient India, regardless of the religious beliefs of their kings, states usually treated all the important sects relatively even-handedly. This consisted of building monasteries and religious monuments, donating property such as the income of villages for the support of monks, and exempting donated property from taxation. Donations were most often made by private persons such as wealthy merchants and female relatives of the royal family, but there were periods when the state also gave its support and protection. In the case of Buddhism, this support was particularly important because of its high level of organization and the reliance of monks on donations from the laity. State patronage of Buddhism took the form of land grant foundations. Numerous copper plate inscriptions from India, as well as Tibetan and Chinese texts, suggest that the patronage of Buddhism and Buddhist monasteries in medieval India was interrupted in periods of war and political change, but broadly continued in Hindu kingdoms from the start of the Common Era through the early 1st millennium CE. The Gupta kings built Buddhist temples such as the one at Kushinagara, and monastic universities such as those at Nalanda, as evidenced by records left by three Chinese visitors to India. Internal social-economic dynamics 
According to some scholars such as Lars Fogelin, the decline of Buddhism may be related to economic reasons, wherein the Buddhist monasteries with large land grants focused on non-material pursuits, self-isolation of the monasteries, loss in internal discipline in the Sangha, and a failure to efficiently operate the land they owned. With the growing support for Hinduism and Jainism, Buddhist monasteries also gradually lost control of land revenue. Islamic invasions and conquest 10th to 12th century. <inaudible> Invasions According to Peter Harvey, From 986 CE, the Muslim Turks started raiding northwest India from Afghanistan, plundering western India early in the 11th century. Forced conversions to Islam were made, and Buddhist images smashed, due to the Islamic dislike of idolatry. Indeed in India, the Islamic term for an idol became Bud. The Muslim conquest of the Indian subcontinent was the first great iconoclastic invasion into the Indian subcontinent. The Persian traveller Al-Biruni's memoirs suggest Buddhism had vanished from Ghazni Afghanistan and medieval Punjab region northern Pakistan by early 11th century. By the end of 12th century, Buddhism had further disappeared, with the destruction of monasteries and stupas in medieval northwest and western Indian subcontinent now Pakistan and North India. The chronicler of Shahabuddin Ghori's forces records enthusiastically about attacks on the monks and students and victory against the non-Muslim infidels. The major centers of Buddhism were in North India and in direct path of the Muslim armies. Their wealth and them being centers of non-Muslim religions made them a target Buddhist sources agree with this assessment. Taranatha in his History of Buddhism in India of 1608, gives an account of the last few centuries of Buddhism, mainly in eastern India. Mahayana Buddhism reached its zenith during the Pala dynasty period, a dynasty that ended with the Islamic invasion of the Gangetic Plains. According to William Johnston, hundreds of Buddhist monasteries and shrines were destroyed, Buddhist texts were burnt by the Muslim armies, monks and nuns killed during the 12th and 13th centuries in the Gangetic Plains region. The Islamic invasions plundered wealth and destroyed Buddhist images. The Buddhist University of Nalanda was mistaken for a fort because of the walled campus. The Buddhist monks who had been slaughtered were mistaken for Brahmins according to Manaj I. Siraj. The walled town, the Odantapuri Monastery, was also conquered by his forces. Sumpa basing his account on that of Sakyasrabhadra who was at Magadha in 1200, states that the Buddhist university complexes of Odantapuri and Vikramshila were also destroyed and the monks massacred. Muslim forces attacked the northwestern regions of the Indian subcontinent many times. Many places were destroyed and renamed. For example, Odantapuri's monasteries were destroyed in 1197 by Muhammad bin Bakhtiyar and the town was renamed. Likewise, Vikramashila was destroyed by the forces of Muhammad bin Bakhtiyar Kilji around 1200. Many Buddhist monks fled to Nepal, Tibet, and South India to avoid the consequences of war. Tibetan pilgrim Chajepal had to flee advancing Muslim troops multiple times, as they were sacking Buddhist sites. The northwest parts of the Indian subcontinent fell to Islamic control, and the consequent takeover of land holdings of Buddhist monasteries removed one source of necessary support for the Buddhists, while the economic upheaval and new taxes on laity sapped the laity support of Buddhist monks. Not all monasteries were destroyed by the invasions Somapuri, Lalitagiri, Udiagiri, but since these large Buddhist monastic complexes had become dependent on the patronage of local authorities, when this patronage dissipated, they were abandoned by the Sangha. In the northwestern parts of medieval India, the Himalayan regions, as well regions bordering Central Asia, Buddhism once facilitated trade relations, states Lars Fogelin. With the Islamic invasion and expansion, and Central Asians adopting Islam, the trade route derived financial support sources and the economic foundations of Buddhist monasteries declined, on which the survival and growth of Buddhism was based. The arrival of Islam removed the royal patronage to the monastic tradition of Buddhism, and the replacement of Buddhists in long-distance trade by the Muslims eroded the related sources of patronage. Decline under Islamic rule After the conquest, Buddhism largely disappeared from most of India, surviving in the Himalayan regions and South India. Abul Fazl stated that there was scarcely any trace of Buddhists left. 
When he visited Kashmir in 1597, he met with a few old men professing Buddhism, however, he saw none among the learned. According to Randall Collins, Buddhism was already declining in India by the 12th century, but with the pillage by Muslim invaders, it nearly became extinct in India in the 1200s. In the 13th century, states Craig Lockard, Buddhist monks in India escaped to Tibet to escape Islamic persecution, while the monks in western India, states Peter Harvey, escaped persecution by moving to South Indian Hindu kingdoms that were able to resist the Muslim power. Brief Muslim accounts and the one eye witness account of Dharmasmavam in wake of the conquest during the 1230s talk about abandoned viharas being used as camps by the Turukshas. Later historical traditions such as Taranathas are mixed with legendary materials and summarized as, "...the Turuksha conquered the whole of Magadha and destroyed many monasteries and did much damage at Nalanda, such that many monks fled abroad," thereby bringing about a demise of Buddhism with their destruction of the viharas. While the Muslims sacked the Buddhists' viharas, the temples and stupas with little material value survived. After the collapse of monastic Buddhism, Buddhist sites were abandoned or reoccupied by other religious orders. In the absence of viharas and libraries, scholastic Buddhism and its practitioners migrated to the Himalayas, China and Southeast Asia. The devastation of agriculture also meant that many laypersons were unable to support Buddhist monks, who were easily identifiable and also vulnerable. As the Sangha died out in numerous areas, it lacked the ability to revive itself without more monks to perform ordinations. Peter Harvey concludes, between the alien Muslims, with their doctrinal justification of a holy war to spread the faith, and Hindus, closely identified with Indian culture and with a more entrenched social dimension, the Buddhists were squeezed out of existence. Lay Buddhists were left with a folk form of Buddhism, and gradually merged into Hinduism, or converted to Islam. Buddhism therefore died out in all but the fringes of its homeland, though it had long since spread beyond it. Fogelin also notes that some elements of the Buddhist Sangha moved to the Himalayas, China and Southeast Asia, or they may have reverted to secular life or become wandering ascetics. In this environment, without monasteries and scholastic centers of their own, Buddhist ascetics and laypersons were eventually absorbed into the religious life of medieval India. <laughs> Survival of Buddhism in the Indian subcontinent Buddhist institutions flourished in eastern India right until the Islamic invasion. Buddhism still survives among the Barua though practicing Vaishnavite elements, a community of Bengali Magha descent who migrated to Chittagong region. Indian Buddhism also survives among Nuars of Nepal, who practice unique form of Vajrayana known as Nuar Buddhism. While the Buddhist monastic centers like Nalanda had been sacked, the temples and stupas at pilgrimage sites such as Bodh Gaya didn't receive the same treatment. The reason these were left unharmed was because they were not material legitimations of rival royal families. Inscriptions at Bodh Gaya show that the Mahabodhi temple was in some use till 14th century. According to the 17th century Tibetan Lama Taranatha's history of Buddhism in India, the temple was restored by a Bengali queen in the 15th century, later passing on to a landowner and becoming a Shaivite center. Inscriptions at Bodh Gaya mention Buddhist pilgrims visiting it throughout the period of Buddhist decline. 1302–1331, several groups from Sindh 15th or 16th century, a pilgrim from Moulton Second half of the 15th century, monk Buddhagupta from South India 16th century Abhayraj from Nepal 1773 Trung Rampa, a representative of the Panchen Lama from Tibet, welcomed by Maharaja of Varanasi. 1877, Burmese mission sent by King Mindan Manabul Faisal, the courtier of Mughal Emperor Akbar, states, For a long time past scarce any trace of them the Buddhists has existed in Hindustan. When he visited Kashmir in 1597 he met with a few old men professing Buddhism, however he saw none among the learned. This is can also be seen from the fact that Buddhist priests were not present amidst learned divines that came to the Abadic Khanna of Akbar at Fatehpur Sikri. After the Islamization of Kashmir by sultans like Sikandar Bishakan, much of Hinduism was gone and a little of Buddhism remained. Faisal writes, The third time that the writer accompanied His Majesty to the delightful valley of Kashmir, he met a few old men of this persuasion, Buddhism, but saw none among the learned. Abid al-Qadir Badauni mentions, 
Moreover Samanis and Brahmins managed to get frequent private audiences with His Majesty." The term Samani Sanskrit, Sramana and Prakrit, Samana refers to a devotee a monk. Irfan Habib states that while William Henry Lowe assumes the Samanis to be Buddhist monks, they were Jain ascetics. Taranatha's history, which mentions Buddhist Sangha surviving in some regions of India during his time, which includes Konkana, Kalinga, Miwad, Chittor, Abu, Sawastra, Vindhya Mountains, Ritnagira, Karnataka, etc. A Jain author Gunakirti wrote a Marathi text, Dhamramrita, where he gives the names of sixteen Buddhist orders. Dr. Joraparkar noted that among them, the names Satagare, Dingare, Navagare, Kavishvar, Vasanik, and Ikshabhojanik still survive in Maharashtra as family names. Buddhism was virtually extinct in British Raj by the end of the 19th century, except its Himalayan region, east, and some niche locations. According to the 1901 census of British India, which included modern Bangladesh, India, Myanmar, and Pakistan, the total population was 294.4 million, of which total Buddhists were 9.5 million. Excluding Myanmar's nearly 9.2 million Buddhists in 1901, this colonial era census reported 0.3 million Buddhists in Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan in the provinces, states and agencies of British India or about 0.1% of the total reported population. The 1911 census reported a combined Buddhist population in British India, excluding Myanmar, of about 336,000 or about 0.1%. Topic. Revival In 1891, the Sri Lankan Sinhalese pioneering Buddhist activist Don David Huavitarain later to be world-renowned as Anagarika Dharmapala visited India. His campaign, in cooperation with American theosophists such as Henry Steele Alcott and Madame Blavatsky, led to the revival of Buddhist pilgrimage sites along with the formation of the Maha Bodhi Society and Maha Bodhi Journal. His efforts increased awareness and raised funds to recover Buddhist holy sites in British occupied India, such as the Bodh Gaya in India and those in Myanmar. In the 1950s, B. R. Ambedkar pioneered the Dalit Buddhist movement in India for the Dalits. Dr. Ambedkar, on 14 October 1956 in Nagpur, converted to Buddhism along with his 365,000 followers. Many other such mass conversion ceremonies followed. Many converted employ the term. Ambedkar ITE Buddhism to designate the Dalit Buddhist movement which started with Ambedkar's conversion in 1959 Tenzin Gyatso the 14th Dalai Lama escaped from Tibet to India along with numerous Tibetan refugees and set up the government of Tibet in exile in Dharamshala India which is often referred to as Little Lhasa after the Tibetan capital city Tibetan exiles numbering several thousand have since settled in the town most of these exiles live in Upper Dharamsala, or McLeod Ganj, where they established monasteries, temples and schools. The town has become one of the centers of Buddhism in the world. The Buddhist population in the modern era nation of India grew at a decadal rate of 22.5% between 1901 and 1981, due to birth rates and conversions, or about the same rate as Hinduism, Jainism and Sikhism, but faster than Christianity and slower than Islam .According to a 2010 Pew estimate, the total Buddhist population had increased to about 10 million in the nations created from British India. Of these, about 7.2% lived in Bangladesh, 92.5% in India and 0.2% in Pakistan. See also History of Buddhism History of Buddhism in India Gautama Buddha in Hinduism History of India Buddhism in Kashmir Index of Buddhism-related articles Religion in India Muslim conquests of the Indian subcontinent Bodh Gaya Harsha of Kashmir Dalit Buddhist movement Gautama Buddha Ashoka Historical Jewish population comparisons Decline of Greco-Roman polytheism Secular Buddhism Notes <laughs>